Again, try plugging in 0 for x and that will give you 0 divided by 0. So this again is uh, indeterminate. Okay. Uh, so what can we do? Okay, what can we do? Well, this involves cosine and maybe we can use a known result for cosine. We know that the limit of uh, 1 minus cosine theta over theta as theta approaches 0 is equal to 0. Okay, we know this result right here. So can we use that to solve this? Okay. Um, okay, so here, just like with the cosine, here we know that our argument and the denominator, they are the same thing. So can we try uh, to find a way to make the denominator equal to 5x? Okay. Well, that's easy, right? We did that before. We can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 5. And by doing that, then the denominator just becomes 5x, okay? So therefore, we can write the limit as x approaches 0. Then I'll write the 5 first. So that's 5 times 1 minus cosine of 5x divided by 5x. Okay, then I can write this as a separate function right here. And so the 5 goes out because that's a constant. So now I can write that as 5 times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine 5x divided by 5x. And that's exactly what this is right so that limit is equal to 0 so then we can just plug that in there equals 5 times 0 and that will give us a 0 here so therefore the limit of 1 minus cosine 5x divided by x as x approaches 0 is equal to 0 Okay, another example, the limit of e to the 8x minus 1 divided by sine x as x approaches 0. Again, try plugging in 0 for x and you'll get 0 divided by 0. So this one is still indeterminate, okay? So what can we do here? We have an exponential uh, expression and a trigonometric expression. So they, they don't usually... Um, go get along well so um, what we can do here first is we can try to separate the functions um, so then we can write that as the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the 8x minus 1 minus 1 over 1 times 1 over sine x okay so just try to separate them because the exponential and the trigonometric functions they don't usually get along that well okay um, now we have two separate functions right here and remember the limit of a product of two separate functions is just equal to the limit of the individual functions multiplied together so that will be the limit of e to the 8x minus 1, um, I just read, divided by 1 times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over sine x. Okay, um, now we have an exponential right here. And, okay, so what can we do? For that one well uh, we can use a known result for that we know that the limit of e to the u minus 1 divided by u as u approaches 0 is equal to 1 okay so then our goal now is to try to make the denominator equal to the exponent of e okay 
So in this case, the exponent of e is 8x, so we need an 8x in the denominator, okay? So, uh, so to do that, just like what we did with the previous examples, we will multiply both the numerator and denominator by, um, by 8x. And then for the sign, uh, again, we can use the result uh, that looks like sine theta over theta as theta approaches 0 is equal to 1. Okay, so we want a denominator for sine x and we want the denominator to be x, so that's just multiply by x over x. Okay, now we have uh, the limit as x approaches 0. Here we have 8x times uh, e to the 8x minus 1 over 8x. Okay, that's what we want times the limit as x approaches 0 of now this one will look like 1 over x times sine x over x now I can uh, separate them further I can separate this further as 8 because 8 is just a constant times the limit of x as x approaches 0 times the limit of uh, e to the 8x minus 1 over 8x as x approaches 0 times the uh, times 1 over the limit of x as x approaches 0 times the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 okay so now observe that I have this and this, so I can cancel that out. And I know what the limit of this is, that's equal to 1, and this is also equal to 1. So if that's 1, and this is 1 right here, so I only have 8 times 1 left, right? So it's just 8 times 1, and so therefore the limit is just equal to 8. So that's it. See you in the next one.